Welcome back to the Cheeky Sales Coach. So as we're going through the introductory stuff, we're covering the basics. And what could be more basic than your customers? After all, you have to have somebody that you're focusing on, somebody that you're selling to, somebody who gives you all the money so you can stay in business. Welcome to Episode 3, The Customer. One of the great truths about life and business that uh, many, many people have pointed out, most notably, I think, Stephen Covey, is to begin with the end in mind. This is such great advice about so many things in life and business, but it's particularly important when it comes to sales. You have to know who you're selling to. And, important safety tip, Wait, what was that graphic? Important safety tip, you cannot sell to everyone. You cannot sell to the universe. You cannot say, everyone in the world is my potential client. Even if that's true, you can't effectively sell to everyone. Selling to everyone is the same as selling to no one. Here's why that's true. You need to have someone in mind who will give you money in exchange for your goods or services. So you, you might literally have something that everyone on earth can use. Great. So far in the history of the world, no one has sold something to every human being on earth. Why? Because it's fundamentally impossible. So how do you figure out who your audience is, who your client is, who you're going to sell to. Let's take a step back and look at some of the specifics of what I'm talking about. Let's go to the flip chart. So for purposes of this video, let's refer to this square area as the world. Note, the world is not really flat. This is just a video representation. So don't get carried away. Now, you can't market to the entire world. You can only market to some of it at one time. So let's talk about the overlap between circulation and your client. For example, let's say this green square is your client. So these are people who could potentially actually buy whatever it is that you're selling. And the red area in this case, let's say that it's an ad uh, on a particular website. If you're lucky, there's some overlap between who you're marketing to and who uh, is actually potentially going to buy. It's very, very rare that you have a huge overlap. So if you can find something that's got a huge overlap, that's amazing and spectacular, and you should take advantage of it. Now, when you think about your client, why would some of your clients be here and why would some of your clients be here? What is the difference in their behavior, their spending pattern, their education, right? There's lots of different things. So what we want to do is figure out the green square. Who are your clients? Who are the people that you should be selling to? Because again, you can't sell to the whole world. Let me give you an example. So I sell primarily in my community to IT professionals, computer consultants, value-added resellers, right? There's a whole group of people that I sell to. So I have to market to them where they show up. It wouldn't do me any good to put ads onto clickable video games geared towards children there's a very small overlap there. On the other hand, if I can figure out a way to get my ads in front of somebody who is looking for Microsoft tools, well, there's going to be a huge overlap there. So it's just a matter of figuring out who do you want to sell to and then how can you find them. The easiest way to identify your clients is to start with a particular vertical or a niche. The word of the day is niche. 
So for example, if you're looking at people who are cat owners, they have a certain behavior. There are places that they shop. There are things that they buy. There are things that they research. There are blogs that they read. If you want to, for example, market to dentists, okay, again, you cannot simply market to every dentist in the world, even if what you have is useful to every dentist in the world. I'll never forget one time I was at a networking meeting and I heard the single most specific targeted market I'd ever heard in my life. People were going around and, you know, name and uh, company and blah, blah, blah. And then they were supposed to ask, answer one specific question. If I could refer to you a perfect client, who would that be? And one person stood up and gave his name and his company and all that. And he said, I am looking for dentists who are within one mile of Highway 50 between this exit and that exit. And I thought, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Like you could literally draw a rectangle around that area and there can only be so many dentists there. But this was perfect for him because he had requirements about how far he was willing to travel, uh, what he could do with regard to uh, trip charges and so forth, given that very limited area, how much he needed to charge to be profitable, right? On and on and on. But he actually could make a living with that. I met somebody else one time many, many years ago who ran his entire business inside the Empire State Building. And I thought, he's probably not alone. He is probably one of many people who run businesses entirely inside that one building because it's big enough. He doesn't need to go <laughs> even across the street to another office building. So when you think about your client, one of the things that you can do is come up with an ideal client. Well, what does that mean? An ideal client is literally someone that you can draw a picture of. You can tell what is their age, what is their race, where do they live, how much money do they make, what's their level of education, right? You can just dial it in very, very specifically. And what that does for you is it allows you to target that person very, very carefully. Now, today we have many, many tools for putting your advertising in front of very specific people. With Facebook and LinkedIn and even Google Ads, you can upload a list of perfect clients and then create a look-alike audience. So let's say that you, you've, got, you've identified, say, a thousand perfect clients. Well, you can then look for everybody who looks like that with regard to the demographics inside that advertising engine. Notice you can also have more than one perfect client. So you might say that you have a group of people over here and a group of people over here, uh, one male, one female, different demographics, different education, right? All of that kind of stuff. You can have two different campaigns. And that's another thing. You can't just do one thing, do it forever, sell it to everybody in the world. That will literally never work. And so let me introduce you to the concept of a campaign. A campaign is something that you look at and you say it has a very defined structure. It has a defined timeline. It has a target audience and it has a very specific measurable goal. Here's an example. Let's say you've got a new product, whatever it is, that you're trying to sell, and you want to sell it to manufacturers uh, who are in light industrial parks around your city, okay? So you've narrowed it down to a very specific group, manufacturers, and very specific locations. There's only so many light industrial parks in your city. It might be a lot, but there's a, still a limited number. 
And in fact, you might start with one section of town within, say, 10 square miles. But once you know who you're going after, you can find them, right? It's, it's sort of almost obvious that you can't find them if you don't know who you're looking for. That's why this scattershot of marketing to the entire universe just doesn't work. Let me give you an analogy. Let's say that you were going to paint something. You're going to paint a wall. Well, you could easily paint a wall in a short period of time, less than an hour in most cases. But if you're going to paint the house, well, that might take a few days. And if you're going to paint the inside and the outside, now you might even have to hire somebody in order to get that done in a couple of days. Now let's say that you wanted to paint every house inside and outside for a hundred houses in a specific development. Well, now that's a project. That project requires you to get supplies and you might commit to the supplies to get a good price, but you don't want to take delivery of the supplies because then you have to store them and secure them. You need to get people, warm bodies to actually go out and do the painting. They're going to need appropriate uh, tools and cleaning equipment and so forth and you're going to have to put together a schedule, right? It becomes a bigger project. Your sales campaign needs to be a project. It needs to be broken down into stages and it needs to be approached systematically. One of the things that we're going to do time and time again in this video series is talk about how you have to make sure that you make every single element work. And that means every element of your sales process has to do its job. Whether that is an ad, a landing page, a call script, right, a sales order, an invoicing system. You have to have a way to get people to give you their money. Because ultimately, if you can't get people to give you their money, you won't be in business. Now, let's just assume that there is a universe out there and it's really, really big and you have to figure out how you're going to tackle it. How do you get started? What's the first thing, second thing, third thing? Well, let me just recommend this. Take a manageable bite. Run a campaign. Design a way that you're going to, we talked last time, get people into the funnel. Warm them up. Get appointments. Remember, every little piece of it has to work. So once you run a campaign, and it could be towards 100 people or 500 or 1,000 or 10,000, but once you run that campaign, you will have some idea how each element of the campaign worked, including picketing your target in the first place. Thanks for tuning in to yet another Cheeky Sales Coach video and podcast. If you have any questions, please send me an email. I'd be very happy to address them. There's also a form at CheekySalesCoach.com. And whether you enjoy the videos or the podcasts, please share it with your friends, tell everybody, and spread the word around. Remember, this is a completely free series, but there are some special deals you can get at CheekySalesCoach.com. Good luck with your sales. Call to action. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you won't miss a thing.